Hey, this is Tim here. Today we're talking about laser cutting. I have my $300 K40 laser cutter that I ordered off eBay right here. It's not the best laser cutter out there, but for the price, it may be the best value. So I'm going to show you what you can do with a laser cutter like this, and also some of the tips, tricks, and hacks that I've done so far to be able to make this work really well for me. So here at the back of the machine, there's a couple important things. If you open this lid, you have the laser tube right here. And that's filled with CO2 gas, and the 40 watts of the laser is just a function of the length of the tube. And there's a mirror over here that reflects it out to other mirrors that move around, and that's what makes your laser cutter work. Um, coming out of the back, there are a couple of tubes, and those are for water cooling. There's a pump that comes with the laser cutter to circulate water through. So I just have a five gallon bucket of water under here and it um, circulates. It's never really gotten hot on me so I don't feel a need for any additional heat exchanger. And there's a plug right here on the side that lets you plug in that pump and also an exhaust blower. So if you turn it on, I have my bucket down here and then before I use it, I always make sure that there's water flowing. And I've been thinking about putting a switch in to let me know that water's flowing or to not enable it until water is flowing because I've had it not flow before and I've just had to tap the pump a little bit and break it loose and then it gets uh, gets to work so um, those are a couple things on the back the other thing that's really important is fume extraction and so right here this is a port that opens up to the inside to let you pull fume out from where you're cutting and it comes with a blower and a tube and it really didn't work very well. The whole house smelled like smoke every time I'd use it. So I've gone ahead and updated that and I'm going to show you what I did to uh, improve that. Okay, so for fume extraction, I have my manifold right here that I built. It's just a piece of 2 inch PVC pipe that I cut at an angle. And I cut a piece of quarter inch plywood that fits in the little slot and cut an oval to match the... Uh, plywood and put it together with a little bit of caulk that I had in the garage. That right there works great. And then I have a bilge blower, I believe they're called. It's for a boat to get the air out of the engine cavity. I bought that off eBay um, as well as a power supply. I think for a computer it's a 12 volt power supply um, that puts out 1.6 amps which uh, is enough to run this this blower and just soldered that uh, that on and I can plug it right into the laser cutter and it's worked great for me for quite a while so between those items a little bit of flexible tube and um, some some duct tape all up total cost was less than thirty dollars and I've got a great fume extraction system to install the fume extractor I take that adapter that I made slide it right down in the in the back like so there's a little bit of room around it so I'm sealing that off with some aluminum uh, duct tape okay so I've got it all taped up and on the other side of the blower I've got some more flexible tube and then I have a long uh, strip of material it's a plastic uh, trim that I got from the hardware store with a fitting in it um, that it can slide in my window to seal that off and make sure that I keep the fumes outside. So I have it put back in place and then I just take the long strip of trim that I made, crack the window open, slide it in, close it up, and I'm ready to cut. No smell. So here we are down inside the machine and you can see you have a gantry right here with some mirrors and a carriage right there. So the laser comes out here, reflects off a mirror to here and as this moves around you're able to cut. Um, one of the problems though is with placing parts in. You can see I have this honeycomb bed that I made and I'll show you how to make one of those. Um, that's in there but when I got it, it had this clip sitting down inside and it has a spring clamp here which for me it was mostly just a hassle to put anything in I guess if you were trying to do some consistent kind of name tags you could clip them in there but uh, that didn't work well for me so let me show you this bed that I made so when you're cutting you need to be a specific distance from the carriage uh, to the workpiece and that can be hard to control if you have you know, gifts or things that are taller 
or shorter and you're trying to engrave a message on that or as your material thickness changes so I came up with this handy little bed and I just have four um, bolts on here that you can loosen and tighten to raise and lower the different corners or you can lower one side if you have something that sits at an angle um, so it's very versatile what it is is I just got a piece of uh, honeycomb material right here cut it to size how I wanted it and then I took and welded up a little steel frame like this to fit the honeycomb in um, drilled and tapped four holes for the bolts and then trimmed a spot for them to fit through so you could make yourself a small bed like this and it sits right in the bottom of the laser cutter and it's perfect for putting all sorts of things on. Makes the machine much more versatile. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about materials that you can laser cut with something like this. The thickest wood I've cut is quarter inch plywood and plywood's a little bit more difficult because you have the glue in it, um, but it seemed to cut out pretty well. So I cut these little linkages out, um, a bunch of these, and they worked great. Um, I usually cut more around eighth inch plywood, something like that. And I like to get these project boards from Hobby Lobby. They come in a package, they're little eighth inch boards, and they fit nicely in there so I don't have to trim anything ahead of time. And they only cost a couple of bucks. Um, and you can cut, cut a lot of good stuff out of those. Um, I have, I've engraved on like kitchen utensils and things like this. You can make nice customized gifts. That's worked great for me. Um, acrylic. I made some really nice cuts. You can see how clean the cut is on that. We'll cut a little bit of acrylic here in a minute. Um, plywood, that's worked great. Polycarbonate, which looks almost like acrylic. It looks very similar. That didn't cut very well for me. And the, with the research that I did, it just doesn't work well with, uh, with the laser. So be aware of that. And also hardboard. This is some uh, different, like a masonite hardboard. I tried to cut from this side. I tried to cut from this side. Um, Again and again, lots of power, different speeds, and was unsuccessful. And I think it's because of the glue. And from the, the reading that I've done online about this, some of them will cut and some of them won't. So it just depends on the type of hardboard that you get. So it's not uh, for every material, but you can cut a lot of neat stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and engrave and cut some uh, wood here and just make a little uh, Ultimate Makerspace sign. So I set my plywood in there and... I'm going to make sure that my laser isn't enabled and turn on the machine. Okay, so I have my uh, board loaded in there. I'm going to press the laser test switch. And it's around 20 milliamps on the current uh, monitor. And I have my current regulation knob on the side turned about halfway, um, top to bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and start this run and it's going to raster over the engraving task so you'll start to see that appear here okay so it's all cut out We'll open it up and pop it right out of there. And there you have it. It works great. video on the K40 laser cutter. It's a great value and with a little bit of work it can work really well for you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos on creating your own ultimate makerspace.